We are redesigning iconic album art, specifically Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. So not only are we gonna put a spin on the original design, I'm also going to take this random album cover and turn it into this augmented reality VFX shot. By the way, if you're looking for any plugins, presets, extensions to save you time and create cool effects, my digital asset store is at the top of the description. So I'm gonna start off by taking that album cover and recording myself holding it and rotating it. Why would I do that? Well, I'm gonna hop into After Effects and planar track the cover so I can replace whatever's on this square with my own custom graphics. We can manual mask around the album and pre-compose the clip, then do a 3D track so that After Effects focuses all of its processing power on just the album. Once that's done, we can create a camera and a track solid We'll hide that for now so we can link our designs to its tracking data later. I'll duplicate the clip, freeze frame it, and then I'll parent it to the tracking data and reset the position. I'll use the anchor point to reposition it and then add a fill effect so I can see exactly what it is I'm isolating. We need to do a bit of masking work so I'll slap a mask on and go around my fingers just so the mask isn't messing up anywhere. This should be pretty simple considering we already have everything 3D tracked and linked. And now I'm gonna do this awesome trick from my augmented reality phone tutorial to make what's inside the album transparent. I'll change the fill effect to black and I'll pre-compose and then I'll do an inverse alpha track mat on my main footage so that the black area in the album is now transparent. Now we can start working on the designs that will be within our augmented reality album. I'll start by altering the original logo for now, just because I want to show you guys some After Effects tricks before I move into the scary 3D softwares. What the hell are you? I'll duplicate the track solid and pre-compose and then I'm going to rename it to album design and I'll drag that layer beneath our main footage layer. Then I'll pop into that composition. I'll start off by making this awesome galaxy effect using the CC Particle World plugin that comes included with After Effects. You can learn how to make that from this tutorial here. I'll leave all these links in the description. I love the galaxy so in our main comp I duplicated it and dragged it above the other layers so that we have our galaxy particles in the album but also protruding outside of the album. Now let's add this crazy depth illusion effect to truly flex the 3D perspective of our album. I'll duplicate the track solid layer from before and then I'll go up to layer styles and add a stroke effect. You also wanna make sure you take that layer and place it beneath everything as well. In the stroke effect options, you can change the look and under the advanced blending, you can change fill opacity to zero so that you're left with just the outlines of your square. You can duplicate this layer and grab that blue Z axis and then just push it further back in 3D space, then slice up the layers so that they pop in one after the other. That way you have this 3D tunnel going further back in 3D space inside of our album. Super cool illusion you can do chest within Adobe After Effects. Now back to our main design. I'm gonna drag the Dark Side of the Moon logo into Photoshop and then I'm going to use the pen tool just to isolate the rainbow, the triangle, and the light beam into their own layers. Then I'll pop back into After Effects and I'll drag that Photoshop project file into our design comp and start adding in some cool effects to make it pop. Using Photoshop in this way is a great way to have full control over your designs and utilize any brushes or tools in Photoshop that you don't have within After Effects. For some finishing touches, I'm gonna add some glow to the layer I'll duplicate the triangle, scale it down a bit, and then I'll slice it up and make them pop in one after the other, just like we did with the depth illusion. That way we kind of have this scaling triangle. Then I just add in some other stylistic plugins. I use Red Giant Universe Chromatic Glow for the RGB glowing, and I use Red Giant Universe Heat Wave for some wiggling. And of course, on our rainbow, you want to slap on a turbulent display so we can have this trippy wave animation on the rainbow. And I also just tossed in some free album texture overlay that I found on Google and I just changed the blending modes to complete the look of our album. So there you go, easy way to animate and control your designs using Photoshop and Adobe After Effects. But what if we wanna go down the rabbit hole a bit more? I'm gonna design an entire new 3D design from scratch while still implementing the original aesthetic of the Dark Side of the Moon album. I decided on this simple changing astronaut design. Sci-fi astronauts have been done a lot, but we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. We're just trying to have fun. I found this free 3D file which I'm going to link below. Bam, import that into Cinema 4D, which is what I'm gonna to use to create our little render here. Next, we need a face for this astronaut. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Daz 3D, which is a free character creating 3D software with a giant library. They come included with these free Genesis 8 male models. So I'll just import that. 
export it as an FBX, and then import it back into C4D. Then I'll just use my selection tools in Cinema 4D to slice off the head and I'll move it into the helmet. The original astronaut was an OBJ file with no textures, so I'm gonna create some Cinema 4D Octane textures here just to make this astronaut come to life. And this is pretty simple. I just created a little orange glossy with some fabric textures that I got from Travis Davids. Great pack for rendering clothes. A specular glass-like texture for our astronaut helmet mask in the front. Then I'll create a simple C4D metal texture, bump up the roughness and put that on the helmet and the oxygen tank in the back. Next, I'm gonna set up some basic Cinema 4D Octane area lights. One giant backlight for the dreamy edge highlight look. One fill light to add a tiny bit of light onto the front of the face and one small accent light in the back to bounce off the back metal tank and the helmet. I added in some C40 primitive cylinders and scaled them so they look like thin tubes and then I just created some colorful emissive textures in Octane to recreate the rainbow light beam from the Dark Side of the Moon album. At this point I sat here and thought how can I make this a little bit better? And I decided to take this model and export it into Mixamo, which is a free website, which is owned by Adobe, auto generates rigs and has a free library of animations you can apply onto your model. And I did this because I am absolutely awful at rigging and Cinema 4D. <laughs> So I found this simple texting animation. I exported that back into Cinema 4D. I removed the keyframe, so it was just a still pose of our character looking down at his hands. And then I reapplied the textures, which is really easy because you just have to drag the textures from your T-Pose model onto our animated model. Nice. Next, I used the Cinema 4D Forster plugin to make this awesome animation of a flower growing. Check on that hyperwind effect for added wiggling, and bam, we have an animated flower dancing around in the wind, even though there's no wind in space. For the soil, I just put a sphere in his cupped hands, and then I found this free dirt texture from polyhaven.com, and we're done. I rendered that out, and then later I even came back and created an alternate version where instead of a human face, I imported in a skull. And then I also added a bunch of spider webs using this free spider web generator plugin, which again will be linked below. So great, we have our live found a flower astronaut and we have our dead spooky skeleton spider web astronaut. So we kind of have the duality between the two. I'm gonna take those rendered image sequences, import them back into After Effects, and then export them as normal.mov movie files. Now let's go ahead and pimp these out a bit more. I'm gonna import those .movs into Photoshop, and I'm gonna use this plugin called Topaz Studio to apply some really cool stylistic filters and looks. This is the same plugin that Beeple uses for a lot of his 3D renders. You can apply these stylistic uh, brush textures that really makes this look like it's hand-painted or hand-drawn instead of computer generated, which is awesome. And then I'll also mess around with the light and some of the other filters they have in there until we have our final look. But there's one huge issue here. Topaz Studio only applies to one single frame and we have a video here. So what do you do whenever the computer wants you to click a million times in a row with no end in sight? You cheat and you use a macro. So I downloaded a free macro mouse recorder and that allowed me to record myself clicking and applying the texture and then moving to the next frame. And then I could just replay that macro recording so I could go to lunch and without having to touch the keyboard or touch the computer, the macro is going away, applying my texture frame by frame onto each frame of that video. Super cool little trick there and check it out. Looks way better in my opinion. I put those back in After Effects and added some opacity keyframes just so it fade from the flower version to the dead spider web version and then I tossed in a little footage crate dust clip just to make the flower go poof whenever it does change. As a bonus effect, I hopped into Blender and I used this tutorial here to apply a cloth simulation onto a 3D face and make it spit out a sphere. Thought that looked pretty crazy. I downloaded some free star and moon models and animated them spinning out of the mouth. And then I also made this animation from this tutorial, but I ended up cutting that at the end. To finish everything up, I screenshotted the first frame of my animation in Premiere, and then I just dropped that layer at the very bottom of my depth illusion layer so that whenever I move the album towards the camera, you can see the first frame of the video. To stitch those together, I just added a little flash transition, a tiny zoom in Premiere, and boom, there you go, you have a semi-seamless loop from the beginning to the end. 
I hope you guys did enjoy. I wanted to try and make this video as entertaining as possible to show you guys what you really can accomplish if you mix together some of these different softwares into your workflow. But I also wanted to make it educational enough for those of you who are editing or doing 3D to pick up a bunch of useful tips for your own work. Let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see next for me. Do you want me to design more album arts or do you want me to do more creative spins on some things that are already out there? I'm always down to do that. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. And I'll see you guys in the next one.